Hey everyone, it's been a while, but with people returning to school, some people have returned to the channel. I figured this would be a good time to give some announcements, give you some updates as to where the channel is going from here. So first one, the big one for you guys as a benefit to you, I will be removing ads from the channel at the end of the month of October. So starting November 1st, you shouldn't see any more ads on the channel. It's actually a very easy thing to do right in the YouTube studio. There's simply a toggle to set to demonetize. Not to go into a big explanation of something personal, but the bottom line is since 2019, the revenue from the channel has decreased year over year. So it's gotten to the point where it's so little that it's really more of a hassle than it's worth. So it's more uh, disruptive to what it does to my personal finances than the benefit as far as how you have to report things. But like I said, that's on me. You guys don't need to know about that. So the bottom line is that you are going to have ad-free content starting on November 1st. I've talked about quite some time about doing this and I figured that this would be the time to do it. Anyways, so if there are any ads after the beginning of November, that's YouTube being YouTube. They have always reserved the right to play an ad whenever they feel like it. So if there's any ads after November 1st, that's YouTube and they get 100% of it and none of it will be going to me. If I could block those ads, I could, but I don't know of any way to do that. So second, I'm going to start covering Godot 4.0. So this is both a benefit to you guys and to me because I've mentioned before that I'm happiest when I'm learning something new. And I think that's one of the reasons why I've stagnated is I haven't learned that much new from Unity in months. I picked up little things here and there, and it was actually for the most part things that you guys suggested to me. So I really haven't learned much lately since that. So I think that I'm going to still cover Unity, but I'll be more selective about what I cover, and I'm going to do the tutorials for Godot. So I myself need to learn it, and then I can start doing tut uh, tutorials and reviews for you guys. Right now it's still in beta, and because of that there are bugs, so there's like some visual artifacts, and I think that'd be kind of distracting. So I'm going to wait into Godot is in its final version, so once it goes live, as production and no longer beta, then at that point I will start doing the tutorials for you guys and hopefully you find them useful. Next, the game that I released in early access on itch.io, Onions Reduce Aggro, there's some issues because one of the publishers that I purchased asset from, they are no longer on the Unity store and I don't know why. So if it turns out that it's like a copyright issue, then that means I can't use those assets even though I paid for them. Now, having said that, that actually isn't an issue too much because some of the assets I got a refund from without even asking. A few weeks ago, I got a couple emails that said, thank you for your purchase. So I immediately thought that there was an issue because I hadn't bought anything in a while, but in the email, it showed a date from like, you know, weeks and weeks ago. I said, okay, that makes sense. That's when I bought those assets. I checked my card just to be safe and there were no charges but i saw refunds so the gear started kind of clicking together and i realized that they probably sent me the wrong email they meant to send me an email saying you've been refunded but for some reason they sent an email saying thank you for your purchase and so anyways the uh those purchases were refunded so it's not like i'm out any money but i can't use those assets because a i've no longer paid for them and b i don't know why they were removed because if it's a copyright issue then that's a really big deal if it turns out that um i'm using unlicensed assets so what i'll have to do is i'll have to take down that version and then I will need to put up a new version once I have gotten assets to replace those. So there was like like six or seven assets in there. They were all like the, uh, the animated characters. So they were the customers who were coming into the store. So that's part of the delay on that. Okay. So what am I not going to do going forward? So as I said, I will still do tutorials for Unity. I'll just be more selective about what I do. But I'm definitely going to stop any meaningful asset reviews. So there might still be an occasional one, but I'm not going to do the kind of asset reviews. Like for a while, I was like buying a new asset every week and doing a review. Uh, none of those were ever profitable, which is fine. I, I did take a loss on all of them, but it was a case where the videos that did make a profit subs subsidized the videos that did not make a profit. And like I said, I was perfectly fine with that because I was able to give you guys another aspect of the Unity experience. So 
what was the what was the store admins like did they how did they handle refunds how quickly did they respond what were the publishers like were they responsive uh, how were the assets that I reviewed? Were they mission textures? Were they missing animations? And those kind of things. So I'm very happy that I did all those reviews, but going forward, there probably won't be any more with only two exceptions. One, if I have an asset that I've already reviewed and there's been like a major update to it, then I'll probably take down the old review and upload a new updated review. And then two, since some of the ass assets that I purchased were part of like bundles, like, you know, humble bundles and things like that, there might still be one or two kicking around that I purchased some time ago that I never reviewed, might still do a review on those, but I don't know, since those aren't that new, I don't know if that's really that relevant. So we'll see, but by and large, I really won't be doing any more asset reviews for Unity. Next, I'm not gonna cover Kenny Shape anymore. I've already mentioned this in a separate video. So I did half a dozen or so videos about Kenny Shape. It was a promising application and it's very easy to use, but the problem is they stopped developing it really quickly. And so it's in a state where what you see is what you get. And what you get, in my opinion, is not enough. I think that there's two or three major deficiencies and it really doesn't make it worth, in my opinion, to have yet another application in your you know, end-to-end -end design workflow, you got this thing that you might be able to use for a few edge cases. I just think that it's better not to have that kind of complication. I personally wouldn't recommend it. You certainly could do what you want, but uh, I won't be covering Kenny Shape anymore. I just don't feel that it is, uh, should be in your toolbox. It's more of a toy in the toy box rather than a tool in the toolbox. Interesting idea, but like I said, in my opinion, they didn't follow through. 3D Builder, I love this application and it is actually the second best performing on this channel so microsoft access is the first 3d builder is the second but it's in a similar position as kenny shape microsoft has long since stopped developing this there hasn't been an update in like three years and even that was just a security update so as far as what happened with 3d builder this is when microsoft wanted to have windows be the platform for 3d printing because in 3d builder once you make your model you can then automatically have it printed and you can pay and that kind of thing right through the application, I believe. I never actually used that because that's not what I use it for. I use it for exporting the models and then using it in Unity, but it was really designed for 3D printing. And that ship has long since sailed and sunk. Microsoft doesn't even develop 3D Builder anymore. I think you might still be able to download it from the website, you know, this Microsoft store but they haven't done any development on it. They don't even have like the 3D folder and the 3D objects folder anymore, which doesn't matter. You can save 3D objects anywhere, but there's a very clear signal that this is, like I said, the ship has sailed and sunk. They really don't care about 3D printing, at least not on the consumer level of uh, Windows. So I probably won't be doing any more coverage there. I have quite a few videos there, but anything else I do would be redundant. And like I said, there's no hope for the application. They're not going to develop anymore. It's it's done and dusted. Uh, lastly, Micro Studio. I think I only did like three videos on this. I was very optimistic about it. Again, it was a, a, a new engine that I didn't know much about. So I started to learn. And then I quickly realized it has huge limitations. Uh, if you personally use Micro Studio, great. I'm glad for you. But it's not something I'm going to do any more coverage from. I also had a good chat with the developer. And he was very open and honest about a few things. Like one of the things I liked about Micro Studio is it seemed like it was going to have all the major asset types integrated as far as you could edit it or create it directly in the engine. And that's something I've said from the very beginning is that the more you can integrate into the engine, the less times your developers have to shut out of the engine and give them a reason to not come back. But some of those things aren't going to happen now. Like there's two audio sections, one for sound effects, one for music. He said there's not going to be any sound effect editor. There's not going to be any music editor. So Again, sales that have ship that have uh, sailed and sunk. Um, he he's free to change his mind, of course. But when we talked quite a few months ago, he said there weren't going to be any uh, updates to that. You would just have to import it from whatever s system or service you use. So some of the things that I liked about it aren't going to happen. Also, uh, I mentioned physics for uh, Godot. There's also an experimental physics system, but it's been in beta for like over a year now. So it doesn't look like they're really moving forward either. 
And there are so many things that are missing when you compare it to other well-developed game engines. Like they don't use the component approach that Unity and just about every other major engine uses. Um, so it's, it makes it much more difficult to do things in Micro Studio. So maybe if it's the first engine you've ever learned, so you go from nothing to Micro Studio, you might be able to make more of it. But I suspect because I'm so used to learning and, and doing things a certain way that I'm probably being more resistant to Micro Studio than it deserves. But again, uh, the tutorials are there. You can do whatever you want, but it's not something I'm going to cover anymore because I just don't see it developing um, quick enough. I don't I don't see it catching up with uh, all the other um, all the other options that are out there. Again, it's free, so doesn't hurt if you want to download it. Okay, so I think that's about it. So that gives you a good rundown of where the channel is going. And if you have any comments, any thoughts, feel free to comment on this video. And please do enjoy the rest of your day.